Hey entrepreneurial clinicians, how are you doing? It is Friday afternoon. Can you believe that it is already the 12th of June, which is awesome because it means that it's almost the middle of June, which means June is almost over, which means the first month of winter is almost over, which means summer is on its way. Yeah, it's bleak outside would be the way I would put it. And we don't have pretty snow falling here. It's just cold. And apparently it's going to be windy this afternoon. So I will be in the warmer part of the house, sitting in my gorgeous mermaid tail blanket later today, if anyone is looking for me. How has your week gone? Kind of a little scared to ask those questions these days because, you know, there have been some amazing progress and achievements and, and people are doing incredible things. I got, I had the absolute pleasure of speaking to a client yesterday um, who I worked with some years ago and she's come back and I, I love that. That's fun. Um, and her business is just booming. It's just taking off and she's so good at listening to what her customers need and then finding a solution. And uh, it was just really exciting to see that happen for her. And I've had another client get an amazing speaking opportunity where they're gonna pay her some of the big bucks to speak as they should, rightly so. Um, and that's just been wonderful to celebrate as well. And for those of us who love telehealth and are really excited by what telehealth has to offer, I had a beautiful um, part of this community reach out to me privately this week. Thank you, Linda Mottram, to explain to me that prior to my videos and prior to me talking about telehealth, she didn't even know it was a thing. She had no clue that it was possible, no clue that it was even a thing. And throughout COVID, Knowing that she could access remote services and telehealth services has meant her daughter has been able to participate in therapy that she needs and that they've been able to have medical attention as a family because she has known to do that. So this is a really cool forum. Angela Clack, I am so pleased you were here, lovely. Bless you for turning up and making my day. So isn't it exciting that we can actually see and have feedback from the people we are meant to serve to say thank you so much for taking your services online. Thank you so much for not making me wait for three, six, seven months. Thank you so much that my daughter's education does not have to be interrupted because of this COVID. My original desire to go to telehealth back in 2014 was all about accessibility. It was like, how do we get me and my team into more places and more people without the cost burden of flying us everywhere? Because, um, you know, that was fun for about six months, the flying me everywhere, and then it is exhausting. Interstate travel in Australia is just not glamorous. Just putting it out there. It's not. You get sick of it. But then when people need our services and when we need when they need our help, why, why are we not using this type of technology? And that's not to say it's for everyone. I'm just a huge supporter of it because it has made such a big difference to my life, my lifestyle, and obviously to clients' lives. But I was meeting um, with somebody else this morning who also has a child who needs allied therapy services, but they need to do it in person because of the needs of that child. And she said the most amazing thing to me today. She goes, my son so looks forward to going and seeing his speech therapist. It is like the favorite part of his week. And I think every single allied health professional who works with kids must want that kind of feedback. So I'm just thrilled that she's having such a good experience and her son is having such a good experience. But then how often do we get that feedback as health professionals? Not very often. So I'm hoping that that goes out somewhere and that somebody who needs to hear it and own it today can go, I love working with my kids. My kids are pretty awesome and they love coming to see me. Um, great business travel in general sucks unless you're on the outside looking in very much so. Yeah, I must admit that 14 hour flight to LA and then LAX. Anyway, let's not get to, can you go to India a lot? Sorry, <laughs> sucks to be you. But thank you for the work you're doing there, by the way, Grant. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I wanted to talk a little bit into today an amazing uh, way that I have experienced customer service from a health professional this week. Now, this person no, has no clue that I'm doing this. I doubt she even watches this. So many of you will know that I'm going through my health stuff and a part of my health stuff is I am working with a physical therapist or a physiotherapist. Um, 
Cancer treatment has a strong recommendation of becoming physically active uh, to help promote good recovery. I needed a lot more physical therapy after my first lot of surgery because we discovered some uh, things in my shoulders that weren't working very well, which is not easy when you can't use your shoulders. So I have been working with this gorgeous woman. Her name is Ruth Meany, and she has a practice called Whole Woman Physio. And we've just gotten to the stage in my recovery now where I need to up the resistance of what I'm doing. Now, anyone who has ever been to a physical therapist has probably seen these little things before. Therabands or Dynabands or things like that. Now, the, these have different levels of resistance. Oh, that's the weak, that's the easier one. Haha, <laughs> know which one I'm starting with. So often you'll go to a physical therapist and you'll be in session with them and they'll just go and cut a length of this off their roll and sometimes they'll just chuck it at you or leave it on the bed at you and um, you take it home and they give you the exercises and Bob's your uncle, You've done, you're done and that's it. Um, in room, in the, in the treatment room, it's completely appropriate and that's what we do. We'd go, oh, okay, thanks. Some physical therapists would even charge you for it and put it on your bill and then you go, oh, didn't realise I was paying for that doesn't always leave me feeling like an, you know, a customer being served. However, she could have just shoved these in the envelope, shove, 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 um, but she did some extra things. And this is the bit that I want us all to get and understand. She took the time to handwrite me a card. Now, the card doesn't say anything, you know, mushy. It's just going, hey, Here's the thing that I said that I was giving you. You've been doing so well. Look after you. It's been hard. So she's been hearing me. She's been watching me. She's aware of me. She gets that this has been hard. She took the time to find and write in a little card. And this little card came in its own envelope. Now, I know you're thinking, Joe, does that really matter? Yeah, it does. For me to open this envelope, knowing full well that these were going to be in there, and then to get this little added bonus of this handwritten card that was so thoughtful and allowed me to feel like I am being looked after and I am being cared for. And I cannot harp on this enough that we as health professionals or coaches in private practice doing this on ourselves, it's not enough to be awesome in the room when you're in session. How we get people into session with us we've got to take them on a journey and a part of that journey is our branding which has to include how we care and you, that this physio has got my loyalty i am like oh no i've got a physio thank you very much or if somebody suggests i need to work with a physio on something oh i've got a physio that i need to work with thank you very much i've already recommended her to three cancer support services going hey for women in the blue mountains this is a really great resource that i love I have spoken to my GP, my first breast surgeon, my second breast surgeon, and my oncologist about her. So just by being warm and caring and allowing me to feel heard and respected has made me go, I want other people to experience her. So we can spend so much time, effort, and energy working out the next algorithm and how much money to spend on Google Analytics. No, you don't spend money on Google Analytics, do you? AdWords or which conference we're going to present and where we're going to sponsor. But the stuff we do like this every single day with every touch point that allows that care, I care, I hear you, I get you. It doesn't mean you have to do therapy with everybody. It doesn't mean you need to be mushy with everybody. It doesn't mean you need to break the bank. I hand make cards. And even yesterday, I was talking to... Kate and Katie from the private practice startup, because I'm going to be, you know, in, I've been interviewed by them again, <laughs> which is fun. Um, the card that I sent probably four years ago is still being talked about. It's still being talked about as something that was really special and really powerful. I love my home making those cards because I love my colouring in and then the creation of the card allows me to feel like the colouring in has a purpose, <laughs> apart from making me feel calm and lovely all at once. So here are some great things that we can celebrate. Here are some ways that we can go, I have heard that person. I am looking after that person. Because what I have learned from this cancer journey thus far is that we as health professionals 
are really, really good at doing the stuff in the room. We're not very good at translating that to care once the person, as the person's coming into the room and as the person is leaving the room. And it is the communication factor, the care factor, the I've got you and I understand you factor that we profess when we're in the room, but people will remember us how we make them feel. People will remember us by how we make them feel. They will not go, well, she taught me some really great techniques and they've been awesome. They're going to go, Joe was great. She made me feel confident. She made me feel calm. She made me feel like I could do anything. That's how we get people to come. That is how we get people to stay. So I want to challenge everybody who's watching this video today or tomorrow or over the next however long, what is one thing that you can implement in your private practice to help your clients feel like you care, you care when they're not in the room? And please don't add them to your email list. That is not acceptable. I want you to be bigger, smarter and think better than that. Email lists have a purpose but I want to understand how you and what are some of the creative ideas that you can come up with. Um, and don't underestimate the power of a handwritten card. Just going to say, because I've received one from, yes, Melissa. Hey, nice to see you. I'm loving this East Coast being available thing. I'm doing these in the middle of the day from now on. Um, it is the little things that mean so much. It, it stops us, stops our work being so transactional. Come to your room, do the intervention, exchange the cash on the way. It allows us to genuinely be a part of a person's change, their transformation, their change. Really cool. So this has been Friday. I am migraine free again. Hurrah. I did have one last weekend. So I'm wondering if we'll have another one because maybe that's how I celebrate weekends now. Who knows? Um, I have a very restful weekend coming up because that is what my body. <laughs> ah, oh, nice. Dee Dee is sending an I'm thinking of you text. That's really lovely. Actually, I reached out to one of my coaching clients this morning. She'd been on my mind for a few days, which and which she, that doesn't happen. And uh, I went, just want to check in and make sure you're okay. And she's like, actually, I'm not. Have you got 15 minutes? I really need to talk to you. And I'm like, I am really glad I did that. That is really cool. All right, so I am curious to know what else we could be doing. How else? And it doesn't have to be expensive. Seriously, let's look at ways that it doesn't actually cost us any extra money uh, and allows us to feel like we're caring for the people we are caring for. All right. Have a wonderful weekend. Please make sure you take the time to do things that replenish you. Remember, I want you back here next week ready to go with the energy you need, the resources that you need, the ability to be present with your clients, which means this weekend, if you're not working, that you're taking the time to rest and replenish. That looks very different for all of us. I will be in my garden. I will be in my colouring in. Um, I will probably read a book and fall asleep because that's how I like to replenish. <laughs> but please make sure you find some way of going, thank you, this body, this brain, these emotions for all the work we've done this week, even for keeping me regulated at times when I didn't want to be. So I'm looking forward to connecting with you all again next week. So until then, go be your awesome self. <laughs>